everybody here. Um, I'm excited to have this opportunity to study together. Now, if you have your Bibles open, if, if you can hear me, let's go to Luke chapter 10. And, and that's where we're going to be spending our time in study. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Notice beginning there in, in Luke chapter 10, in verse 38. Now as they went on their way, talking about Jesus and His disciples, this is set immediately after Jesus finishes the parable of the Good Samaritan. I'm sure a parable that you're familiar with, a parable that you've heard a number of different times. As they went on their way, Jesus entered a village. Just a little bit of context about where we are in the book of Luke. If you go back just about a chapter to Luke chapter 9 and verse 51, the Bible says that Jesus in that moment set His face to go to the city of Jerusalem. That that's the direction that Jesus is going. When you read from Luke chapter 9 to about Luke chapter 19, Jesus is on a journey to the city of Jerusalem. Why is Jesus going there? Why is Jesus on a journey to the city of Jerusalem throughout ten chapters in the book of Luke? As you continue reading this story, you find that Jerusalem is the place where He's going to die for your sin. It's the place where He's going to die for my sin. And so as Jesus is on that journey to Jerusalem, the Bible says that He enters into a village. Luke doesn't tell us the name of this village, but you notice what happens when He gets there. That there was a woman named Martha who welcomed Him into her house. Jesus is this new, popular teacher. Many people viewed Him as a rabbi. The word about Him was spreading. He was becoming more and more popular as the days went on. He was known as someone who spoke with authority. Not like all the other Jewish teachers. Not like all the other Jewish rabbis. Jesus was one who spoke on His own authority. And so as He enters into this village, there's a woman there named, named Martha who welcomes Him into her house. Just a little bit about Martha. As you continue reading throughout this text, you find that she has a sister named Mary. More than likely, Martha is the older of the two and the owner of this home. She invites Jesus to come into her house as a guest. But then skip down just a couple verses to verse 40 and watch what she does. But Martha was distracted. I think the King James Version uses the word she was cumbered. She was distracted. Watch the irony here. Martha invites Jesus to come into her house And then whenever He accepts that invitation, whenever He takes her up on that offer and He enters into her home, she becomes distracted from Him. Do you know what it's like to be distracted? I remember one time when I was probably about six years old, I played on a rec soccer team in in town. They played over by the airport here in Lebanon. I was never really that good at soccer. Never even really liked soccer. The only reason that I played, I just played for one season, was because my best friend loved soccer at the time, and he actually went on to play in college at Trevecca and had a pretty successful career. I just wanted to be on his team. So one time we were playing a soccer game, and I was, of course, sitting on the bench, and the coach put me in at goalie. If you know anything about soccer, the goalie's supposed to pay attention to the game. The goalie's supposed to watch the field that when the players come down the field with the ball, you're supposed to defend the goal. You're supposed to stop them from scoring. If you know anything about six-year-old soccer, the goalie doesn't see that much action. Because six-year-old soccer is really just a bunch of little kids running around, kicking each other in the shins. And so they don't really make it to the goal that much. So I'm, I'm playing goalie. Haven't seen that much action in the last few minutes. So I started looking around. And right behind the goal, There was a girl standing there who was probably 16, 17 years old. I'm going to admit this in front of my fiance, who's here today. I I turned all the way around, my back facing towards the game. I was looking through the holes of the soccer net, and I started waving at this 16-year-old girl. (laughs) Eventually, she noticed me, and she started to wave back. I didn't see another second of that game. Didn't see another minute, never turned back around. Eventually the coach saw what was going on, so he pulled me out. Tyler, what were you doing? You were facing the wrong way. Six-year-old Tyler knows what it's like to be distracted. 
I still know what it's like to be distracted. I get distracted whenever I'm in class at Freed Hardman. I get distracted whenever I'm trying to do my homework. I get distracted whenever I'm grading papers and quizzes and things like that for the graduate school at Freed Hartman. I don't know if you do this, but sometimes I even get distracted when I'm having conversations with people. That somebody will be telling me something, they'll be telling me some kind of story, and I'll just stop listening because I get distracted by something else. You know what it's like to do that? I mean, surely I'm not the only one here this morning who knows what it's like to be distracted in some kind of way. Isn't it easy to be distracted from what we're supposed to be doing sometimes? Now, take that idea and look at it from a spiritual perspective. Sometimes as Christians, we find ourselves in situations in life and we go through seasons in life where we're distracted from Jesus where we're distracted from our relationships with Him, and we're distracted from the kind of people that we're supposed to be as His followers. It's so easy to fall into that kind of lifestyle. It's so easy to slip into that kind of thinking that you might not even realize that you're there. You might not even realize that you're distracted from Jesus. That's how easy it is to fall into that kind of life. Sometimes we're like Martha, aren't we? Martha welcomes Jesus to come into her house, invites Jesus into her house as a guest, and then is distracted from Him just two verses later. In a similar way, we invite Jesus to come into our lives. In fact, we invite Jesus to be the Lord of our lives. We invite Him to be the Master of our lives, and then it becomes so easy for us to be distracted from Him. What causes that? What causes us to be so easily distracted from Jesus. Well, maybe it's easy for us to become distracted from Jesus because we become so focused on the world. Maybe we, it's so easy for us to be distracted from our relationships with Him because we allow sin to slip into our lives. You know what the Bible says about the world. You can't be focused on the world and Jesus at the same time. Because when you're focused on one, you're going to be distracted from the other. When you're focused on the world, you're going to be distracted from Jesus. Whenever you're focused on Jesus, you're going to be distracted from the world. You can't focus on both at the same time. For instance, 1 John chapter 2, and beginning in verse 15, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust thereof. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Consider the question of James chapter 4 and verse 4. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to make himself a friend of the world does what? He becomes an enemy of God. You can't focus on both at the same time. Because no man can serve two masters. For he'll hate one and love the other. He'll be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in riches. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24, you can't focus on Jesus and the world simultaneously. Because when you're focused on one, you're going to be distracted from the other. What does your life look like right now? Maybe you find yourself in a position this morning where you're distracted from Jesus. And it's because you've become focused on the world. It's because you've allowed sin to slip into your life. And maybe that's where you are this morning. Maybe that's what you're struggling with this morning. But when we go to Luke chapter 10, and we think about how Martha's distracted, that's not her problem. Martha is not distracted from Jesus in Luke chapter 10 because of worldliness or sin. Well, maybe sometimes it's the case that we're distracted from Jesus because we become so focused on ourselves. Because we become so focused on what we think and what we want. As people, sometimes we tend to be a little bit selfish. Can I ask you a question just purely for your reflection, not trying to point fingers? How do you spend your time throughout the week? Can I tell you what I've seen in the church and what I've seen in my own life? That instead of reaching for a Bible, 
We reach for our phones, our iPads, computers, laptops. And instead of opening our Bibles and allowing God to speak to us, maybe for just 30 minutes a day, we spend three or four or five, maybe even six hours looking at a screen. Instead of sitting down to pray, we sit down in front of the TV and again, sit there for two or three hours watching all the things we want to watch, watching all of the things that we're interested in. Instead of building our relationships with Jesus, we put all of our time and all of our effort into building relationships with other people, relationships with family, friends, maybe even business relationships. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. You need to put time into the, the relationships that you have in your life. But what becomes a problem is when you put so much time and energy into your physical relationships that you neglect your relationship with Jesus, there starts to be a problem there. That when we become so focused on serving ourselves instead of looking to serve other people, whenever we get in the car and we, instead of driving our families to worship, Instead of driving them to learn more about God, we drive them to our favorite restaurants or to the bowling alley or to the movie theater or to some kind of sporting event. Or maybe we don't get in the car and drive at all. That we just say, okay, you know, this morning I'm feeling kind of tired and, and what I would rather do is just stay home and relax than go and worship God. So we'll just do that this morning instead of going to learn more about Him. So you take that kind of thinking that's so centered on self, and again, go back just one chapter in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 9 and verse 35, and you find Jesus saying this, if anyone desires to come after me, do you want that this morning? Do you want to follow Jesus? Do you want to follow in His footsteps? He says there's a few things you have to do. Number one, you have to deny yourself. That's going to include things that you want sometimes. That's going to include things that you would like to do sometimes. Jesus says, if you want to come to follow Me, here's a message you need to hear, and this is something you need to think about. You have to learn to deny yourself, and then when you do that, you have to pick up your cross. Daily. He says, you have to have such a devotion to Me that you'd be willing to die for Me. Deny self, pick up your cross. Jesus says, then you're ready to follow Me. But here's the problem with that. Sometimes instead of following Jesus and doing what He wants us to do, we invite Jesus to follow us in doing the things that we already want to do. It's like the group that Paul describes in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2. How there's going to be a group of people who are going to arise and the first thing that he says about them is that they're going to be lovers of themselves. Maybe sometimes we fall into that category. Because if you aren't careful... Your life becomes all about you. And when your life becomes all about you, you're going to be distracted from Him. If you aren't careful, your life becomes all about what you want. And when your life becomes all about what you want, you're going to find yourself in a place where you're distracted from what He wants. And maybe that's where you are this morning. Maybe you find yourself in a position this morning where you're distracted from Jesus because you become so focused on yourself and what you think, what you want, what entertains you the most. But again, when you go to Luke chapter 10, that's not Martha's problem. Martha is not distracted from Jesus because she's so focused on herself. In fact, her distraction comes from a place where she's completely focused on others. So what if we consider this third option? Maybe sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we're distracted from Jesus because of how busy our lives can be. Maybe sometimes we become so distracted from our relationship with Jesus and from the people we're supposed to be as His followers just because of the amount of things that we have to do on a daily basis. Don't you think that's Martha's problem? In Luke chapter 10, notice verse 40 again, that she invites Jesus to come into her house, welcomes Him as her guest. And then verse 40, Martha was distracted. She was cumbered. Why? What's the reason? She was distracted with much serving. What's the message? Martha finds her herself in a place where she's distracted from Jesus because of how busy her life is in that moment. 
because of all the things that she feels like she has to do. She's just invited this popular teacher to come into her house. And she wants everything to be perfect. She wants to be this, this great hostess. And so you can almost picture her as she puts on her apron and she's running throughout the house after she invites Jesus in and says, okay, you can sit here in the living room. I'm going to go and do a few things real quick. Uh, she's running throughout the house, cleaning the house putting everything in the place where it needs to go, making sure that everything is nice and tidy. And while she's doing that, she's also trying to cook a meal for Jesus. Her visitor, her guests, she wants him to have something to eat. She doesn't want him to go hungry. And so as, 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 as Martha is running around her house, she's trying to cook and clean and prepare. She becomes so busy in this moment that she becomes distracted from the one that she just welcomed in as her guest. Notice how she feels. Notice what her life looks like. There's three things in verses 40 through 41 that describe what Martha's feeling in this situation. Number one, when she's busy and she's distracted, she feels like she's completely alone. She feels like she's completely by herself. I have all of these things to do. I have all of these different boxes to check. And I have to do all of it by myself. I don't have anyone to help me. She says, not even my own sister is helping me. And then in verse 41, when she's busy and distracted, she's anxious. Her life is filled with worry and stress and anxiety. How am I going to get all of this done? How am I going to complete all of this? I wonder if I'm being a good enough hostess to the guests that I've just invited in. And then number three, when she's busy and she's distracted, she's troubled. She's completely overwhelmed in this situation. Notice she's anxious and troubled, not just about some things in verse 41, but she's anxious and troubled about many things. Martha is distracted from Jesus, yes. But it's not because of worldliness. It's not because of sin. And it's not because she's become so focused on herself. Martha is distracted from Jesus in Luke chapter 10 because of how busy her life is in that moment, and because of all the things that she feels like she has to do, all of the boxes she feels like she has to check. Maybe you're distracted from Jesus this morning. And it's not because you've done anything wrong. It's not because of sin or worldliness. It's not because of selfishness. It's not because you're only thinking about yourself. But maybe you find yourself in a place this morning where you're distracted from Jesus just because of how busy your life is right now. Life is busy, isn't it? I know that your life is busy. I, I know that you have a lot of different things to do and you have a lot of different things that you're trying to juggle and balance. You're trying to wear a lot of different hats and you have so many different things to do during the day that it just doesn't feel like there's going to be enough time. I mean, let's just... Consider that for just a moment. Let's start with your family. Whatever that might look like for you. You have your husband or wife, your kids, your grandkids, your parents, your grandparents. You put that into your extended family. You have all of these relationships within your family that you're trying to grow and develop and pour yourself into. But then you also have your friends. And you want to spend time with them. And you want to build relationships with them. But then you have other relationships in your life, like business relationships. So you have all these people that you're trying to develop relationships with and all of these different people that you're trying to pour yourself into. But then you also have a job. And you go to work every day. And that takes up a lot of your time. It takes up a lot of your energy. And then some of you have to go to school five days a week for eight hours a day. Then some of you are in that spot where you go to school every day and you have a job and you have all these relationships that you're trying to balance. Can you see how things add up? And that's not even mention, mentioning the hobbies that you enjoy. That's not even mentioning the clubs or the teams that you're a part of or the clubs and teams that you go to support. That's not even mentioning the responsibilities that you have, like the bills that you have to pay. Life is busy. And sometimes we find ourselves in places where we get so wrapped up in the busyness of life that we become distracted from Jesus. Maybe you can relate to how Martha feels. Maybe your life is really busy right now and, and you find yourself in a place where you're distracted and you feel like you're completely alone. 
I have all of these things to do, but nobody to help me. I have all these things to accomplish and I have to do it all by myself. Maybe you're filled with worry and stress and anxiety this morning. How am I going to get it all done? How am I possibly going to accomplish everything that I need to accomplish today or this week or this month? Maybe you're troubled this morning. Completely overwhelmed with how your life is going. Anxious and troubled, not just about some things, but about many things. Boy, life is busy. And I know your life is busy. And here's the thing about it. We can't change that this morning. We can't change the fact that life is going to be busy. We can't change the fact that you have a lot of boxes to check. We can't change the fact that it sometimes seems like there's not enough time in the day. You know what we can change? We can change how we respond to that busyness. I can't change that your life is busy. But one thing that we can change is how we respond to the busyness of life. So let's ask this question. Instead of being distracted from Jesus, when my life is busy, how can I be a disciple of Jesus? Isn't that what we want? Isn't that who we want to be? That even when my life is busy, I don't want to be distracted. I want to be a disciple. So how can I get there? We've been talking about Martha for the last few minutes, for the last few minutes since we've been together. Let's take some time to think about Mary. What is Mary doing in this situation? Back up to verse 39. And she had a sister called Mary. What was she doing? She was sitting at the Lord's feet and listening to His teaching. In the first century, Jewish rabbis throughout the year would take in various disciples. And every single day, those disciples would come and sit at their rabbi's feet. They would come and sit at their teacher's feet and listen intently to what their teacher had to tell them. In Luke chapter 10 and verse 39, Mary is taking the position of a first century disciple. She's sitting at Jesus' feet. She's listening intently to what Jesus had to say. But here's the thing about that. In this time, in this culture, only men over the age of 12 qualified to be disciples. In this culture, only males over the age of 12 qualified to take this position at a rabbi's feet and to listen to his teaching. In this culture, women were supposed to be the ones in the house cooking and cleaning and preparing like Martha is doing. So when Mary takes this position at Jesus' feet, she is completely breaking the molds of the culture that she lived in. And I think that's why Martha is so upset with her sister. I think that's why Martha is so irritated at her. Notice in verse 40 that Martha was distracted with much serving. And so here's what she did. She went up to Jesus and said, Martha is so irritated with her sister that she leaves what's distracting her. She leaves what she's been working on since we've been studying in Luke chapter 10. And she approaches Jesus. Notice the tone of her voice. It's very aggressive. It's almost like she's throwing this in Jesus' face. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. Jesus, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all of this by myself? Do you not care that my sister's not doing what she's supposed to be doing according to the culture that we live in? Apparently she'll listen to you. Tell her to get up and help me. Tell her to get up and to do what she's supposed to be doing. How does Jesus respond? Verse 41, But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things. Watch the contrast there. Martha, as she approaches Jesus, is very aggressive, almost throwing this in His face. When Jesus responds, can't you hear the love in His voice? Can't you hear the compassion in His voice? Martha, you have to understand where you are in life right now. You have to understand what you're feeling right now. You're distracted because you're busy and you feel like you're alone and you're anxious and you're troubled. Martha, here's where you are right now. But verse 42, but in contrast to that, Martha, in contrast to where you are, let's talk about your sister. And let's talk about what she's doing. One thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. Both Mary and Martha were faced with the same decision. 
They were faced with the same busyness. But here's the difference between the two. Martha chose to be distracted. And Mary chose to be a disciple. Mary chose the one thing Jesus says that was necessary. The one thing that was essential. She chose the one thing that mattered. She chose the good portion. You know what that means? It means that Mary made the right choice. She made the right decision. When she said, okay, I can get wrapped up in all of this busyness or I can set apart time to sit at Jesus' feet. She says, I'm going to sit at the Lord's feet. That was the right decision. Why was it the right decision? The culture says it was the wrong decision. She was supposed to be helping her sister according to their culture. She wasn't supposed to take the position of a disciple because of who she was. Why is this the right decision when culture says it was the wrong decision? Watch the end of verse 42. She has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. Here's why it was the the right decision. Because what Mary gained from sitting at Jesus' feet is something that can never be taken from her. What she received, what she gained from spending time in the presence of Jesus and spending time listening to what He had to say, that's something that no one could take from her. When Mary and Martha were faced with the same busyness, Martha chose to be distracted. Mary chose to be a disciple. So here's the question we ask. Instead of being distracted from Jesus, whenever my life is busy, how can I be a disciple of Jesus? Do you see an answer in this text? If you want to be a disciple, I think what God teaches us in Luke chapter 10 is that regardless of how busy we are, we have to make time in our day to sit at Jesus' feet and to listen to His teaching. Regardless of how busy you might be, regardless of how many things you might have going on, regardless of how many boxes you have to check in any given day, if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you have to set apart time to allow Him to speak to you through His inspired Word and to allow Him to tell you the things that you need to know. And you might be thinking, well, Tyler, you don't understand. You don't understand my life. You don't understand how busy I am. You don't understand everything I have to do. And you know what? You're right about that. I don't understand everything that you have to do. I don't understand all the details that you have to fulfill throughout any given day. But one thing I do understand, because God has revealed it to us in Scripture, is that in the midst of that busyness, if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you have to set apart time in your day to sit at His feet and to listen to His teaching. If that means you have to eliminate something, then eliminate it. If that means you have to get rid of something, then get rid of it. A disciple of Jesus should never be too busy to enter into His presence and to sit at His feet. So where are you in life right now? How would you describe your life right now? Are you a Martha? Or are you a Mary? Are you distracted? Or are you a disciple? So when you choose to be a disciple, when when you say, okay, starting today, regardless of how busy I get, I'm spending some time with Jesus. When you make that decision, realize you're making the right choice. You're choosing the good portion. You're choosing the one thing that's necessary, the one thing that matters, because the time you spend with Jesus and what you gain from that is something that nobody can take away from you. There's a lot of things that people can take from you in this life. What you gain from being in the presence of Jesus is not one of those. Are you a Martha? Are you a Mary? Are you distracted because of busyness? Or are you a disciple of Jesus who every day chooses to sit at His feet? Maybe this morning you realize you need to make some changes. We'd like to help you do that as we stand and as we sing.